So it's that time again, it's time to make some music using some retro nostalgic pieces of hardware. Today we're going to be using the Nintendo NES. The NES, the, the Nintendo Entertainment System for short. Yeah, that's right, we're going to be uh, trying to make music on the NES. I have never actually tried to make music on the NES, so this is going to be a first for me. A little while back now, there was a cartridge available called the MIDI NES, which was basically a MIDI interface for the NES. The MIDI NES was at the time hard to get hold of, and now even more so. There weren't a massive amount of them made, and what the MIDI NES let you do was control all the five sound channels on the NES over MIDI. Well, thankfully, there's a modern version of MIDI NES. It's called the Fami Mami 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 MIDI. From my understanding, this is a very similar concept to the MIDI NES with a MIDI cable literally hanging out the front of the cartridge. So you plop it in the cartridge port. Oh, I've already got something in there. Ooh, Bart World. Anyway, you plop it in and then you push it down. You're able to control all of the uh, five channels via MIDI. Anyway, let's give it a go. So now I'm plugging in the NES into my live sequencing setup. I usually have two Beatstep Pros, but since the last tour I'm actually experimenting with this Circlon, uh, which I'm hoping that might be the answer to my sequencer problems, but we shall see. So we're gonna try and play this with this. I don't really know how to use this yet, but it'll be enough to show you what the NES can really do. So the display doesn't actually display anything. It's a bit of a shame, but it probably makes sense because it probably frees up the whole NES to make uh, music. Right now, there's no real signal of it doing anything, but just trust me, it's actually coming from the NES. So there's a bunch of different channels. This is channel one. Channel two, which is exactly the same. Channel three is apparently a triangle. Channel four, we've got some noise. Channel five has actually got two different modes. You can have it as a sampler. It's got some drum samples. We can mess with loads of different parameters of it. So, uh, for instance, the release time. That isn't the only CC command you can kind of do. There's loads of them. For instance, sweep. So I'm just trying to make uh, this triangle wave as the kick. Kind of missing that kick drum. Or maybe there, there probably is a trick of getting a decent kick drum out of the NES. I just haven't figured it out yet. Add some bit of modulation. Oh god! I'm just gonna mess around with the speed of the modulation, which is this. Just make it a bit random. Try and do a drop, are you ready? Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Wait for it. really play the circle on right now it's taking a little bit of practicing but it's, it's a proper good sequencer I've been waiting for one of these beasts for a while what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go away and make a song on the NES and how do you think I'm going to control the NES to make this song you ask well initially I was actually gonna use uh, the uh, Macintosh classic for uh, with Cubase on it but then I realized that the Cubase hasn't got like really quick controls over control commands of MIDI. Not as quick as I want and as quick as I think this will suit. I mean, yeah, okay, controlling it with a computer might be better, but somebody called themselves Look Mum No Computer, so somebody can't use a computer. But then I realized what's the perfect companion to an 8-bit Nintendo's entertainment system. Well, yeah, obviously, a hardware Tracker. The nerd sick. The eight channel tracker that's made for tracking your tunes just like back in the 90s. 
Oh yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the first five channels on the nerd sec as MIDI channels. So they're going to go off into there. So yeah, with that and that together, I hopefully I should make a pretty funky song. So I'm going to I'm gonna get busy. Okay, so I've been programming for a couple of hours. I think I've programmed enough. It's about a minute and a half worth of music. The reason I thought it would be good to use the NerdSec to sequence the NES is because uh, you have the ability to, uh, for every single step, you're able to control multiple parameters on the NES at the same time per step. So that means that you're able to like make the modulation go crazy or change the pulse width or change the release or something for every single step. So you can kind of really like uh, express what you want to say in your, in your dodgy music. So yeah, I've got a fair few bits and bobs. The noise channel is doing most of the drums. However, I've added with the pitch out on channel six of the NerdSec, an extra Eurorack kick drum just to beef up a bits and bobs. And this is the NES and the kick drum going into a mixer and then it's going off to the, uh, to the recording device. So anyway, without further ado, let's play what we got here. So yeah, that's a quick look at the Fammy Mammy 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 MIDI. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty damn cool. I'm probably gonna use it more. I might even build an interface like I did with the um, Master System 2 for this. Anyway, the loops from the Circlon Jam are available on my Patreon to download, as well as the song that you just heard. So if you want that, go and check that over there and it helps to support all of these projects. The filters are nearly done on this beast, so that video is gonna be coming very soon. It's been a lot of work. And yeah, I've been looking at my no computer. That was good to try it.